opportunity presents itself, I think teams that are going to be risk, you know, uh, that want to take risks are going to have to go for it. Yeah, uh, there is benefit in it. If you yes. decide to take control over an area, it can have massive rewards. You just got to make sure you are making the absolute right chance. You know the fact that there is so much pressure on these teams. And everybody, let's be honest, this is something that could be a grand finals lobby. So this yes. is this is about to get ridiculous real fast. Right as soon as the plane goes up, you can hear all the players actually screaming back behind us. Yes, I mean, the excitement is through the roof right now. I mean, the tension, palpable, everybody coming in here today. You know, Tiggleton was asking for hugs <laughs> because he was, you know, feeling so stressed out about today. The emotions are high, the tension is high. And that's going to come through in the games. Wait, and that you, should come through for the viewers. Did you get a Tickleton hug, too? Yeah. Am and I a Shrimzy like hug. Am I, like, the only person that didn't get Tickleton hug? You didn't, you didn't I, go I ask for a Tickleton don't. hug. Well, I'm not going <laughs> to ask them for a hug. <laughs> maybe you just didn't bump into him. Uh, yeah, maybe that's it. That's okay, though. With everything, we'll see. Uh, pretty simple. Place. You're missing out. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, no, I've got no hugs. Shrimzy's <laughs> okay, hugs are okay. magical. Shrimzy does give the best hugs. This is true. Well, I, I mean, okay, so Pachinki is not going to be contested by the Sonics. That's probably the kind of focal point here to start this. It's been one of the biggest storylines of the event. Hey, they do th Right now, they've been doing their best when they don't have it. Yeah, 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 totally. No, I mean, like, look, they've been playing good outside of it anyway, and, uh, you know, we we know that SGD is completely bananas and is not going to not fight for this, so you got to go do something else. Uh, you know, credit to SGD in a way that they have the tenacity and that sort of devil may care attitude. Oh, well, ho, 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 ho. of course. Of course, Matchroom. Are you kidding me? We go to a chicken dinner match, and our first one is going to be on Military Base Island. But, hey, Big Up fans, good time to be you. Well, yes. I, <laughs> Wait, that is a massive asterisk you just put after that yes. Okay, so, I mean, obviously I'm I'm a little bit biased in the Big uh, you know, uh, department. However, I, I will say that, they just don't get a lot of chicken dinners in general. That's not their it, play style. This, this is a safe place. You can say <laughs> what you really want to say. It's fine. They, I mean, they're typically an edge team. And when we've seen in this event in particular, when they try to control a central location, try to control a compound in the middle of the circle, it doesn't go well for them. I mean, 22 bopped them out of a compound clean. 4-0. Uh, that bagel pot was firmly entrenched in. They had no real you know, uh, bothersome issues. They, they were just sitting there. And so, yes, they're going to go up to Radar Tower. Yes, they have priority on this. Yes, we've seen this position. Remember, you united early in this tournament. However, another caveat to what I'm going to talk about here is that, in general, the Asian teams don't play this tower like teams in America do. EU plays this tower better than I think anyone in the world. Oh, strong words coming out there. Uh, we do have 22 that is making the assault on the Western Bridge. Say the fact that EU plays that tower pretty well. Well, guess what? We also do have FaZe that's making an approach over there. I mean, EU United here, not the region. Oh, okay. See, I, yeah. I was like, I was going to no, like no, counter. Don't, it, don't get okay. excited, okay. EU fans Dude. from Europe. I, I, I mean, Look, EU United, United powers up the higher the high ground goes. Yes, exactly. They're the best in the business that I've seen at making those high ground positions. And you don't know, worry, FaZe fans. Yes, there is two members of uh, Big Opa that is up on the tower right now, but they aren't really set up to harass FaZe too much, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is pretty free for them. Yeah, Burham's going to go for the boat, um, you know, putting it in a spot where it's relatively safe to get everybody into it. Uh, you know, ditch the vehicles in, and in we go. And uh, usually Burram has <laughs> ditch been... Ditch the vehicles, yeah. Yeah, well, not in that way, but yeah, that works too, I guess. Uh, I guess technically he did hit a ditch... And so, yeah. He did, okay, yeah. I mean, it, the literal ditched the vehicle. Yes, I like that. Okay, I'll take it. BBL, man. This is just, this is just their early game, Dude. isn't it, man? It's always something random. Something's going. <laughs> I don't know what is in the water for BBL. I, it, you, you almost start to feel bad for them with how just weird the early game gets for them. And that last game yesterday, match from they were so close. I know. They were I, so it, close. Like. <sighs> I try not to have favorites or anything else like that as we come through, but whenever you just see somebody playing with as much heart, and you could tell Smash wanted this so bad, he was trying absolute hardest to get there and just narrowly miss it. I know that they're going to come in. They got goals now. If anything, I just hope that fed the anger and fed the beast. I hope so. I, I really think they're a team that, if they get through today, has more than earned it in my mind with the way they played throughout this event, with all the trials and tribulations they've gone through uh, to come so close yesterday. Them, FaZe, or two teams, Bagel Paw, that I think, you know, if they get through today, I think absolutely they deserve it uh, in terms of just their overall effort throughout the event. 
Okay, Sonics, you know how FaZe managed to come through here earlier and it wasn't quite so bad? Uh, it might be starting to get worse. FaZe just moved up into the satellite buildings that are just to the e or, sorry, to the west of the radio tower itself. Megapod hasn't firmly full set up on the tower, so there is a chance they might be able to sneak through this one. Most teams are leaning into that western bridge instead. That's where we do see Petrogor Road coming, Cerberus, Quetpa still looking for a vehicle, maybe to meet up with his teammates. I we still gonna... have everybody up in the north that isn't, like, moving. I was going to say, you think anyone's going to bridge camp? <laughs> nah, dude. Like, no. Sonics, uh, I think that we're... If you guys don't watch what's going on in uh, the Americas, we had the nastiest two bridge camps I've ever seen happen at the exact same time in one game. On that the same bridge or different bridges? Two, no, we had bridge camps at the exact same time, both bridges, <laughs> and it was like, I think it was crazy, like 10 teams all tried to cross in the exact same circle. Oh, God. And since then, you can notice that uh, there's a lot of hesitation from America's teams when they go to the Everybody kind of learned their lesson a bit on that one. Yeah. Treat them with respect. Yeah, it's funny how that works. Edie has to shoot at Shen here. Shen just drives on in and is yeeted out of the lobby. That's, you know, a rough start here for SUD. Well, they're still going to come in, and that's going to be another one down. Jervis is going to follow this one up, and now it looks like Burrow Rom's going to get control over this area quite efficiently. That means that SGD is going to move back into the north. Big Upon might get some vision on them, or even Sonics, depending on how this path is going to go. Yeah, so, you know, SGD has to pull out of that. There's no reason to fight this in this format, of course, so uh, out you go. Burrow Rom, you know, with that early rotation. Uh, down from the Nova, from the Milton Power area, excuse me, uh, around Novo into the southern tip. 22 as well is already down there uh, across the bay from Buriram. Uh, as expected, Bur uh, Bagel Pa went to the top of the mountain phase in the kind of research, whatever you want to call that, the research facility right next to it, uh, the oh, radar tower. Oh, no, Sophia. Yeah. Sophia down, and it's just going to be more going to PO. Follows it up, and SGD, the first one's out. Tough, tough start for SGD. You know, they made a play for a compound that they were hoping would be left open. Uh, but, you know, Buriram, fast to the boats, were able to get ahead of them and uh, take a, a pretty okay position, uh, I'd say, in this Wait, first circle. Yeah. what is even happening at Rajan? We've got I don't know. coming over here. We've got Overpeakers, Tailu, all pathing very close to each other. I don't think this is going to be a fight. They got to let them go by, right? You would maybe the last car. Think? Yeah, take a shot to the last car, see if maybe you can pick up something with it. But... Yeah, not too much else going to happen with that. So we're going to see the continued pathing come out from there. Uh, PP is also going to be coming down from the north. I also want to give an update to Quetpa, still looking for a vehicle. I can almost see a world where you don't even want to shoot at the last car in this situation because you don't want to stall them out. Yeah, you don't want to stop. Hey, you don't want to fight them why'd there. why'd you do that to Axelift? He was just driving. Eh, they're just having fun. Bumper cars, man. Bumper yeah, cars. bumper cars, yeah. Uh, New Happy is coming over here to the east, and they're going to be approaching Milta here in just a second. Uh, still no firm bridge camp on that eastern bridge, really. No. I think that does lead back into Please, what you talked about. Nobody if anybody really wants bridge to camps fight. here, I think yeah. you're, you're, you have made yourself enemy number one for the rest of this lobby for the rest of the day. <laughs> like, just absolutely, you have pissed off the rest of the lobby so much. I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't want to be them. Well, I mean, whenever we look at it, BGP does get the most information from this sure. area. So you don't really need to harass. You don't need to get the kills. If no. something presents itself, take it. But right now, it's more about just saying, okay, where do we go next? Everybody is looking not at Circle 1, not at Circle 2, not even probably at Circle 3. Circle 4 is where everybody is trying to figure out how they want to handle this. I think you're right. I mean, I think that's the most pivotal circle most likely. Uh, to come through in this format is Circle 4 because, especially on Miramar, but here on Erangel as well, gives you a lot of information about, you know, what are likely outcomes, what are going to be the priority positions, the really powerful positions. I mean, Circle 1, certainly, there, there are some priority positions that were scooped up early, but in Circle 4, oftentimes that dynamic changes. What are the priorities will uh, adjust, and the teams are going to have to adjust with that. Looking through, Tai Lu and EIQ might be getting close to each other. Quetpa. <sighs> I, was that I, a, just, I just feel bad for him at this Was stage. that a shotgun in 22's hands? I'm not sure if that's cut loot or if that's purposeful. I, I mean, okay, I don't think that any... He might come across a vehicle if he continues more to the west. I don't think the Polish power is going to be near him cause a problem. Sia, though, does spot out in Tropic players on rotation, so going to take a couple shots with them. 
uh, they should probably just continue on. Uh, they, I don't know. They might actually stop just due to the risk. They don't want to overpush this yet and don't know what's going on. So Sia is going to be presented with an opportunity. Blue Zone now coming into this, and this is just a stall for both of them as Polish power is going to be coming right behind this. Look, I'm going to tell you, if there's one team that I think might not give up mm, in this lobby, it might be Ty Lue. <laughs> that is true. With what we saw yesterday, like the way they were laughing, having a good time, no matter what the result was in their games, I, I think they're just kind of here to have fun at this point and let the chips fall where they may. I just want to know what Polish power is going to do here as they hear the firefight going on. Circle does move more to the north, still keeps in that eastern bridge. We do have New Happy that's hopping inside of a boat. Overpeakers might see them as they are playing the northern side of that eastern bridge. But uh, this log jam around the western bridge looks like it is going to be alleviated as Tai Lu is now eyeing a rotation to the eastern bridge, and that might allow Entropic to make a move, but not before Polish power sees them. Yeah. Th those don't that. go in the water like that. Hey. Uh, are they tr are they like are they trapped? Are they trying to move it more? I, I, did they, oh, get, did they, they, they get their boat stuck? They might be stuck in a little cubby. Oh, there we go. No, there no, no. Wait. I think their boat might be stuck. Oh no. Because I think they wanted their U.S. to push the boat back into the water. Oh okay. Okay. Yeah, the cars are coming. This coming is in. fine. They're fine. Right, They're fine. Right, let's see how it stacks up. Okay. This is <laughs> breathe. Well, I, I don't know. Like it looked. The, oh, not again. Quepa. No. Come on, man. No. I mean, this is. This just is heartbreak, man. It, it really is. You know who's not going to be allowed to drive in that squad ever again. Yeah, him. And look, look at he's completely, he's completely away from the rest of his team. They're already in the military. They're in the C block of the military base. He is out to the east of Corey. So unless he can just like get really lucky with heel loots the rest of the way through, maybe I don't know. Maybe there's still a boat at Ferry Pier potentially. That's he's going to have to get lucky with a vehicle spawn. Yeah, I mean, at this point, silver linings, you at least know where teams are dropping due to what vehicles are gone. He's got right? information, sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next game. You That's really are the glass at. half full kind of guy. I really am. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, Tyler is going to be making their cross. Uh, no, real firm, uh, no real firm beachhead camping right now. Uh, Petrichor Road, as, as well as the Tropic, might spot them as they make landfall. New Happy is crossing the bridge. It did look like the boat got dislodged and could be passing over. Oh, does he see it? I, well, he he's will see the right if way. he keeps running that direction. Yeah, he should see it. So I, that's that's huge. I'm just sad because you know it's going to take so much of his meds that finally when he gets a vehicle, he's, gonna die. he's going to get right next to the edge of the zone and somebody's going to shoot him yeah. because he has no meds left. Well, that's the worst part of this, right? Since yeah. it's, Especially since it's chicken dinner format. You know, you get to the edge and everybody's going to be there. I mean, and they're not going to be fighting, so they're just going to be waiting. And they're going to be like, why is there a U.S. coming in from the blue? Well, okay, let's just shoot it. That's a good call coming out from New Happy. They're going to go ahead and lean down as, man, it's a lot of vehicle problems. Oh, no, right no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Wait, maybe? Uh, no, it's no, done. No, that's it. That's it. Uh, look at this way. At least there's a whole bunch of, like, stems right there, right? Yeah, that's, again, silver linings. Uh, me, I mean, Ming Ming's this already is, here. This is actually bad because overpeakers were holding an angle onto this, and they're kind of watching what's happening. So... With this, uh, there is an opportunity for Overpeakers to pick up oh. something at Clib. There you go, bring him back. Oh, baby, Clib. Love to see that. And New Happy's going to have to, you know, the res should be more than doable. I don't think anyone's going to try to pressure this. And that might just put them in a position where they have to wrap around, go underneath the bridge, <laughs> drift into Tai Lu territory. He's just, yeah. Now there's all these vehicles. Look at, he's just passed them left he's, and right. He's, he's got, got plenty. I, I don't know why I was even worried. Yeah, it's, now it's just... At that point, that's where I get a little bit of baby rage, and I'm like, where were all you guys like two minutes ago? Goo goo gaga. -ga. That's right. Okay. <laughs> New Circle's about to pop. Uh, it it can kind of still go anywhere, but it is going to stay on the wow. bridge. Wow. 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 I mean, this is a brutal circle. It is. I, I mean, next circle will, of course, shift south, uh, you know, very hard, but this is still a really nasty circle. Teams are going to have to fight. That's this all there is to it. I mean, it's going to be, what, mostly Normandy Beach? That's about it. Yeah, Tyloo's sitting great. This is going to be, oh man, I don't know how we're going to handle this. Uh, 22 realizes the problem, already making a move. Uh, if you can at least get south of that road, then maybe you can find some stop. Uh, yeah, shacks, whatever you can get. There are still some buildings that are going to be available. 22 is going to get Pryo on those. Yeah, and then Petricor Road's going to take Pryo on this crescent you know, compound, this double two-house compound with the wizard next to it. Sonics is probably heading coast. Uh, but there is still New Happy on the other side of it. Um, I'm assuming they're just they're done with this U.S. Maybe, 
And they're just going to go on foot. Maybe just leaving. Oh, they're just leaving Shrimzy behind as kind of an anchor. Uh, as a sniper on the back. Uh, so they are totally fine. Bagel Pots to come down off that tower. And this is where that tower sucks. Because coming down off of this, yes, you have information. But in this format in particular. Oh, my clip. Everybody's got information. That was over the freaking building. What the hell, man? Everybody Clib, knows. Clib says no. Overpeakers are going to get a chicken dinner today. Everybody knows you're coming. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the kind of the double-edged sword of that tower. Yeah, it's great if the circle goes that way, but when it doesn't, you got to go down it, and it's steep and Bart's already wide open. He yeah, might be able to pick up even oh, more. Man. Okay, over peekers, I see it, I respect it. You guys got some goals. Pio's now going to have to defend up. And this is just a chain res situation. Finally, a nade doesn't connect, but Vard already on the angle waiting. He's got to be careful as Pio is trying to provide oh. cover, has spotted him out. There we go. Uh, BGP might have an opportunity to do something with this now. Yeah, that gives him a lot of breathing room. And that makes it really difficult for overpeakers to get over to Vard uh, to go for the res. They're going to have to commit a lot of smokes uh, to get over there. It is difficult for Pio to shoot a bit from that angle. You got Theraton 5 crossing in front of GX, who has been kind of standing pat phase can still chill in their compound a little bit of damage done but so far so good but uh, you know the deeper they go the different more difficult this gets you have to just start assuming that everything has every building every dip is going to have somebody in it so with this t5 you don't have a lot of options they're going to crest up looks like they're leaning cerberus sided means that cerberus is already going to be posted up waiting it comes down the hillside. Shots are going to connect. Take down one. Trying to reposition. Use the hillside to block it out. But now they're just going to be leaning into Ty Lu's direction. Yeah. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. 4T5, potentially. I mean, there is a bit of a dip here, but Zhao Yang has a good angle onto the approach of Theraton 5 as they get to the cliffside. They are going to park their vehicles there and have to work with the cover provided by those rocks. Circle going to hard shift to the south in some manner. Uh, almost wait, certainly. Wait. This is very, very important. Quetpa made it up and caught up with BBL right as soon as they're engaging pretty close to Burram. So four-man stack back together for BBL. Yeah, it's phase four, and he gets there. That's, I mean, that in and of itself is pretty impressive. However, it's phase four blue with Burram in front of you. I mean, what is this tournament? These two teams just find each other. They've got a magnet, you know, opposites attract, I guess, maybe. I don't really think they're that different. But, I mean, it, 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 it's just every time it's these two teams. So now I think that Burram might be getting lazy, and that's what BBL was waiting for. Code Marco is going to take one down. Now the opportunity to move forward. It is a quick push coming up from BBL. Follow-up's going to be coming out. Thunderloss does go down to the zone with some shots that also came his direction. BBL knows the fact that they need to get out of the zone as fast as possible. Burram already making a push back into this position. BBL, though, still with three up, are trying to make sure that they can find an angle into the two still up for Burram. Code Marco goes ahead and finishes off the other two. Now, how is BBL's approach going to come into this one as it looks like they are going to go ahead and try to crest the top. Got to be careful for the nades, though, as the ship's going to come down. Connix takes a lot of damage, peeks back into it, but BBL now inside a safe zone has some time to breathe as a nade's going to land right on top of him. Yeah, that was a good grenade from Smash. He already caught a weakened Kanaxi after Kanaxi had landed a headshot. And now Noadra, the only one left for the side of Buram. He is going to watch them cross. I mean, everybody's weakened. He could do some real damage here. Code Marco got taken out by Lukaruk, so it's a 1v1. Smash yet again, the last one up for BBL, trying to make sure that their hopes and dreams have an opportunity here. Looks in, connects with a few shots, but he is going to go down, and therefore Burram takes some casualties, but at least gets control over this area. Hell of an attempt by BBL, but... You know, that, those two Quetpa vehicle accidents kill are killer. Uh, the rest of the team kind of stalls up to wait for him, and it costs them. Running into a tenacious Buryam, as always, on the edge. Zhao Yang, grenade, up and in. Let's see if we can find anybody from Polish Power, Cappy and Marslek, to, uh, content to just let that one come up short. And, you know, Tyloo could continue to control this beach compound, continue to control the Normandy area. Uh, BGP did come down the hillside and are still contending with OP, but it feels like over. It's not going good. Yeah, they've got the advantage in this one. It feels like they've got a good read on it. The only thing that uh, you should be concerned with if you're an Overpeakers fan is New Happy. He keeps trying to venture into the west. Instead, now is looking to the south in Overpeakers' direction. There's no more door to shut, and Clib had quite a few more grenades, so he's kind of waiting for the timing, the res to come through, and then a grenade, I would think, should be entering this door. Oh, it just came up short, splashed on the outside. Attempt. Again, from Jeems, wow, they have a lot of frags. I mean, Bagel Paw has to find an out. This is a really dangerous to be in, building to be in with this many frags in hand of your opponent. 
I mean, overpeakers can't make too much of a move is the issue in and of themselves because they still also have Sonics in 22, so this is a very awkward situation for them. But James just says, screw it. I've got goals. These guys have been pissing me off for a while, moving in, seeing if maybe he can connect Nate into that one, but that's just going to reveal angles, tosses it in, does manage to take down Damon. Now look through the windows. You see BGP was not expecting this. James deciding to take Destiny into his own hands. Molotov's going to come in as well. He knows exactly They're where done. the lineup's going to come, and there you go. Overpeakers pick it up. That's a great push by James. I mean, he knew he had Bagel Pot dead to rights, and it's just pushing the angles, keeping himself covered, throwing good grenades, and then finding good shots. And then the Molly as well to do some extra damage. Extremely well coordinated and executed by the Overpeakers. Meanwhile, Polish Power is going to have to try to go center for a Shaq. Again, we talked about it. The priority positions positions change and obviously from circle one to this circle drastically different and there's this shack available for Polish power and I tell you what that's that's not that bad given given the circumstances tells you what we're looking at in this circle 44 still alive in a ghost car driving around as people are getting shot out of it um, now the teams that have been playing forced to play edge are going to be moving into a very entrenched set of teams. FaZe has themselves a smidgen of a section that they're going to play, and it looks like GEX is also going to move into Burrow Yes, SSR goes down, but he should be able to get rezzed. And now it's going to be Entropic that also sees Cerberus, so a lot of small movements coming in right now. Yeah, I, I mean, everybody's just trying to carve out a piece of the pie as much as they can. New Happy on the outside looking in. Sonic's ahead. Theraton 5 still on the beach. They haven't even found their way into the next circle. 22 across the road. Theraton 5 has to make a go of it with their vehicle. They cannot break through Tyloo's defenses. They're going to be running right through Sonic's. I mean, this is not looking good. Oh, that vehicle is on fire. Jumps out. They do get to a dip. Manage to avoid the vehicle explosion, but Zia is so close. Manages to hit the shots on extra. Now it's just a matter of time. Looking in back behind us, and it's also going to be New Happy trying to get an angle in as well. Nice toss on an aid. Sia yet again finding success. When I dip, you dip, we dip. Well, it didn't go good. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they're on five. Just, uh, I mean, they had nowhere to go. It, it, again, this is really, really tough on the edges because so many teams are getting forced out into them because of the hard, especially because of the hard shift in nature. I mean, the format plus the nature of the game makes this a very difficult edge game. Now, I, if there is a team that can play edge, I, I think better than maybe anybody in the world, it, sh it could, should be New Happy. We do have New Happy that was trying to harass Overpeakers, and Overpeakers now making the move in. Already going to have one of the members go down. Overpeakers, while they got success against Begopa, are going to go down to the hands of New Happy. Yeah, so New Happy, I think, is going to find just enough space on the edge of this, on the eastern corner, that they can avoid the line of sight of the Sonics. So that's that's nice for now. I could see FaZe really keyed in on GEX, but GEX Zenon had found some space. Fax hits a headshot with the M24, though, on the Yan Lee. That's devastating. This is actually pretty close. Two members of FaZe are in a danger close position for them. Got to be careful, though, as we do also have Cerberus that's along this path. FaZe now starting to make a move forward, already sitting on two kills. GEX having to regroup right next to a tree and near on no other cover. As if they go north, they're going to be moving right into Cerberus. FaZe now starting to make more of an aggressive stance into this one. Fax is going to connect one more nade and now it's on Zenon back behind this one he still has to move into the zone and FaZe seems like they have a read on where he's going to be now it's just a matter of the defensive line trying to hold a Cerberus is also starting to hide this yeah exactly Cerberus was thinking about it back over to New Happy and the Sonics grenades are coming out from both squads trying to soften each other up a decent amount of damage done to New Happy non uh, excuse me none done to the Sonics just yet Tickleton had an opportunity there couldn't quite find the knock Ming able to get down on Ming Ming able to get down on the ground of time. We have Petrichor Road that's going to be fighting the traffic right now as we also do have Tyler getting some vision on what's going to be going on with New Happy. FaZe still trying to harass what's going to be going on, but as they're trying to move forward, it's going to be 22 that's coming back behind them. Zenon not going down has caused a big problem with Cerberus now starting to peek into FaZe's direction. They are firmly surrounded. Three different teams holding off on this edge, and they have got to make sure that they control it on every angle. With Diggory going down, that means a player apiece is having to hold back a team, and that's going to be near impossible to do. I'm loving the proactive nature of these teams right now. Third partying on the edges, trying to clear their edges, trying to make sure they have as much playable space as possible. 22 here, going to clean up some members of FaZe, almost certainly there. Diggory should be basically dead to rights. Vizera has to take the fight to Fex and is going to get the knock. 
This is just oh, so brutal down here. Uh, Xenon is at least now starting to eye into the direction of Cerberus, but a very weakened phase is looking into 22's direction. Gizera, who's found a lot of success over in America, is now starting to lead the way. Tropic is also going to get eliminated, but Sox finds himself tightly. Close range fight. CC trying to move in, and Sox just could not hold their dip. Tyloo now starting to come alive at this stage. Uh, Ty Lu is far strong and has complete control over the northeastern edge. Now, New Happy was able to kind of use the chaos of this situation to sneak some members underneath this. Mime's still alive as well. See if primetime has shown up for the grand survival. This is going to be I'm just clinging to life right here. Ty Lu is just on fire right now, and they want to set Mime on fire. He's going to go down, drops us down to eight teams. Ty Lu now in control of all of the northeast. Petrichor Road, the northwest, but the south is still very contested. Yeah, absolutely. Cerberus did a really good job managing that fight down in the south. They didn't lose anybody. They were able to contain GEX and FaZe. 22 was never able to gain much ground either. They lost a player for their efforts. So, yeah, that is indeed a shotgun in the hand of Gizera. I'm not, again, I'm not sure if that's intentional or not, uh, or if they just cut loot really, really early to get to that position down on the southern coast. Aix left and Petrichor Road uh, just suffered a knock to high. Saki now as they're trying to take a fight to Polish power. A little bit of damage done to that shack. Aix left is running right in. He's got one molly. Trying to make the breach around this, manages Perfect. to get the toss in, and oh, that is a cooked Polish power trying to move out. Spray is going to be coming out. Exlip just has to play around the Molotovs that have been tossed down, does find one of them, continuing to make the press. Throwables now starting to come out. There is nowhere for Polish power to go. They are just being picked apart over here. But Tyler now starting to get vision on what's happening at range, trying to make sure that they can get some damage into Petrichor Road as well. Cerberus hears this is now moving in from the south. While Petrichor Road does get control over this area, it is coming at a massive of cost. All right, is Ty Lu going to try to crash that or not? The angle was able to be cut off by Petrichor Road to get that res. It looks like 22 in the meanwhile trying to contain that southern edge. In fact, they're going to go right by New Happy. New Happy has the car out front. Ty Lu's going to stop. Are they going to react to five? Oh. CP spray isn't good, but Ming Ming's is. This is just full on. New Happy's lined up. They've got a perfect kill box into this. 22 was trying to look down, but Ty Lu makes a fatal mistake at this change. Now, one more player coming in, seeing if maybe he can do something to New Happy. New Happy, Tatter, no helmet, weakened armor still looking through this. They have got to make a way into the circle, but it is finally going to be Ty Lu, who has been a thorn in so many team sides, going out. New Happy, while you got the shack, you still got to find safety. Yeah, I mean, I think that Ty Lu just kind of lost their heads for a moment there, drove by it. The U.S. out front, they spotted it a little bit too late and pulled up, and New Happy reacted so well. Now, Ming Ming has been knocked out in the open. New as that's Ty Lu's U as out there to provide cover from Petra. Petrichor Road who has suffered a knock themselves, so both teams going to go for that res again. Coming into the final stages of this game, having all four up is so, so important. Still a hold off with FaZe. You can see that they did manage to get one of their members up. 3v3 coming over here between FaZe and 22. It's going to be Tycon at range that gets the knock on effects, making this more complicated for FaZe to have to deal with. Let's see, 22, they don't know how they want to move this yet. Instead, leaning back into the dip, getting it down onto 8. He pretty much establishes the way that they're going to push into this. But with Cerberus having that high ground control means the fact that this could be a death trap for 22. They realize that they just want to get control over this hill, but by making sure to keep an eye on FaZe, they are starting to surrender area to New Happy. Yeah, exactly, and Cerberus as well. Both two teams that are very keen to capitalize onto this. We're down to our top four. Only one can come through. Only one is going to move to the grand finals tomorrow. We've got two teams with four, one with three, and if two, if 22 can get this res, they would be back up to three, but looks like it is going to happen. New Happy is going to allow it. They don't want to push their luck. There's a crate there. They're going to regroup, resettle. You know, we saw them lose some of those helmets and some of that other gear. That is a huge drop for New Happy to get. Okay, you can start to hear that back behind us, everybody's starting to get more loud. Uh, shouting starting to come out for the calls. Emotion starting to run high into this. We have Cerberus that's got a very strong control area that they're playing up on the high ground. Circle is going to shift away from it into Petrichor Road, into New Happy's controlled areas. Means the fact that 22 is going to have a very desperate push that they're going to have to make into one of these two teams. This is kind of weird because if 22 and Cerberus beat each other up on top of this hill, mm -hmm. New Happy and Petrichor Road are actually separated a bit by their sight lines currently. Uh, the both are inside of the circle, so they don't have to move right away. Meanwhile, 22 has to make a move, and already Cerberus knows it, and they're capitalizing on it. Tycon's got the knock onto Haven. The other two members of 22 scrambling to try to recover. Still using the high ground to the best of their capabilities. You can see that Petrichor Road and New Happy are both leaning away from this. 22 backs against the wall. 
Don't know exactly how they're wanting to navigate this just yet. Sure, shotguns are great, but you got to get close range with it first, and that hillside is not providing the pathing that they want just yet. Instead, it's still Cerberus. Not making a push into the zone yet, instead holding the angles of approach that 22 can try to make a move with. Now, opposite side, New Happy waiting just sitting there. This is a trap waiting to pop off. 22 walking right into the waiting sight lines. You can see it's going to be ZP Yan sitting there. Nade's going to start getting prepped up. But Petricor Road taking shots is going to stall it out. Therefore, that is going to allow 22 to realize the trap coming, step away from it. But now they have to go back Cerberus direction. I think they found some open space because New Happy isn't going to push up this hill at all. They don't want to. You can see that if they go up too far, they're going to cross the sight lines of Petricor Road. So they're going to have to wait this out. 22 now can wait it out as well. We're going to be going into phase nine, it looks like, with four teams still left. With, oh my goodness, Matram, there are so many players. There's 14 players left. 22 has been in a protracted fight with phase for so long. I don't think that they have the utility that some of these other teams do, but you can even see coming over with Cerberus, it's a couple of smokes here or there. Lots of the frag grenades already spent. New Happy moving in. It was Tyloo that they managed to walk over the corpses of, and they've been fighting for so long, there's probably not too much on them. This is going to be a very low economy fight for these teams to have to deal with. I mean, look, Hastings got 72 got nothing. bullets. Yeah, exactly, dude. It's low. It's low for everybody. That Groza in the hands of HS may be a difference maker for sure for New Happy. I mean, but this is where you're looking for your superstars to step up. This is where you're looking for your Ming Mings, your Aches left, your Tycons. Those kind of players need to come up huge and already Aches left has got the knock on the HS. That's the Groza. Looking into New Happy's direction, wants to secure the low section of this hill. That means that New Happy now having to look into 22's direction. Cerberus, fine here. They want everybody else to fight so that way they can swoop in and just be vultures to take this game. Nades are continuing to rain in the direction, but you can see that Petricor Road does not want to overstep. 22, on the other hand, moves in, gets a rock so that way they can try to get just a touch more high ground to look into the smokes, get some cover with it as well, but they have got to be careful as Petricor Road also gets vision into it, and it's going to be New Happy eliminated first, and now there's going to be a chain domino effect coming out of Cerberus does get vision on them as well. Oh, Cerberus is fighting on two fronts, and they're making it work right now. They've got one down on the 22, a knock on to Petricor Road, who is keen to just try to guard their lines to make sure that Cerberus can't push down. Ooh. Grenades are going to go past and confirm the kill on the mill. High kill counts coming out for our teams at the end. They wanted control, they wanted to make it to the end, and they are doing it. Now, with just three teams up, 22 is the odd team out, looking into very strong four-man and three-man squads, controlling very strong sections of this match. Petricor Road, though, having to play more defensive. Eight's up, does spot out Haven, and 22 now just only has Gizera up and nowhere to go. There's too many teams around him. They know where he's at. He's going to go down, and now the 3v4 starts. Uh, Petricor Road is so pinned down, and a bunch of damage. Eight's left already on the ground. Ming is hurt, but there's a return fire. It's just long left. No, he's gone. It's going to be Cerberus taking the first game and going to the grand final. Cerberus, you can see the elation on their faces. First game in, first game out. Pressure relieved. Grand finals time. They're right behind us. I mean, congratulations. Yeah, to that them. was a bit of that yelling I was talking about a second ago. <laughs> and already, so a lot hey, of stress. Let's guys? go. Hi. Let's go, boys. Tycon just gave us a heart. You love to see it. Oh, man. I mean, well handled there at the end. They maintained their space so damn well throughout that entire game, Matt. The way that they controlled FaZe and the other teams that were on the southwest yeah. corner, kept them at bay, was so masterful. I mean, we were talking about the fact that, you know, you got to pick your fights and when they're going to come into it. Once we got, I would say, probably past that mid-game, the teams that were just controlling it, they were taking fights. They were making sure that nobody could encroach in their areas. That's how they got in the late game. So many high kill count teams there at the end. Yeah, yeah, just just wonderful. And there's the winning moment from the coaching staff. And you can see the emotions <laughs> are going to be so high today. You'll love to see it. I mean, this is the, this is the double-edged sword, right? Whenever we look at the chicken dinner system, there are a lot of emotions on the line. But at the same time, it is a hectic set of emotions. No doubt. No doubt at all. And w what a way to finish it. What a way to have our first game of the day go down. Yeah, that's just still, we still got three more. Dude, this is going to be wild. Uh, I, I was expecting it to be crazy moving into this one, but a military game to kick it off and staying on the bridge for so long. We've got a group of guys that have been hanging out with us for so long as well. Walk us through what we're going to be looking for and what's the next team that's going to be joining the lobby. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Walk is the key word as, this, <laughs> as the game moves slow when it needs to. 
rejoicing. Congratulations for Cerberus as they come through as the first team to get the chicken dinner and survive the grand survival round. You know, it all starts with a military circle. What a way.